What's in my bag 2019? This is a behind the scenes video for my awesome Patreons. Thanks guys for joining me. I'm gonna be showing you in a minute what I take with me when I go on our trips, why I have it, the uh, little tips and trips I've, um, tricks I've found out over the years. Let's roll the intro. All right, now, I've opened this up ready to go just to give you guys an idea of as to, you know, what it looks like um, when I opened it. Now, first up, the go bag. I used to have camera bags. They look expensive. Thieves like them. I've had camera bags stolen. So now, I actually just use stock standard bags. Don't look like camera bags, do they? And what you can do on eBay or Amazon you can find these camera bag inserts. So obviously in this small carry-on bag, I could fit two of these quite easily, but because I basically use the Lumix LX10 for my primary, and I sometimes use the Sony um, A55 for my secondary, this bag is sufficient and it carries everything that I need. First up, definitely get yourself some sort of method to back up your footage. This is the WD uh, Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro. It's a one terabyte battery operated backup system. It uses Wi-Fi, so you can actually use this actually as a, a standalone um, disc to be on your network. But what I use it for is this. It's got an SD card slot. So after I fil finish filming um, on location, I put my memory cards into here, and then what it will do is, oh, let me give you an example. All right, so um, now it's ready to go. I'll put the SD card in there. So what it will do, it will actually test to see if I've um, put this disc in before, uh, the SD card rather, and it will then start backing it up. And you'll see some progress uh, LEDs across the top here as it actually does so. So great little addition to my um, toolkit. Cost about $275 and well worth the investment. All right, I'm gonna put that down and Nick and keep doing what to do. Also about this drive, it's obviously got a battery, so you can plug in devices to it and get them to be charging. So if you need a little bit of a rescue charge, it's perfect for that. And it's three out of four, it's almost finished backing up the SD card. And that is probably a great segue to this. This is a SD card holder. And I got this for about $12, I think, off Amazon. I'll try and find the links and I'll put them down below, by the way. And it carries eight SD cards. Now, green side means I can use it. Red side means I can't, all right? I've talked previously about how I've lost footage, either through corrupt files or literally I've deleted stuff before knowing that I should, hadn't got it in the right place. So which is why I now have this. All right, so that's now finished backing up. Um, so this can be ejected. And this is ready to go. So this is just a 16 gigabyte uh, SD card. Um, let's talk about SD cards for one quick minute. First up, you'll notice I've only got 16 and 32 gigabyte sizes. I don't go bigger than that. And the reason is, is that if you get too much footage onto the one SD card and it becomes corrupt or you do something stupid with it, you're going to be losing a lot of footage. So I'd much rather swap out into the camera a new card for whatever situation it is. So one of these 32 gigabyte cards will easily hold about two and a half hours at 1080p. In terms of speed, I have by about 90 megabit per second speed. And um, yeah, in total, I've got like one, two, three, four, five cards. And I'll probably buy more over time, but I don't feel I need to at the moment. Um, the green side is good to go. I can actually film with that. Red side is I'm still working on a project and I haven't published. So there's a copy on here. There's a copy on here and there's a copy on my computer. When I've published, I then will move this over to this side so I know that it's ready to be actually used. And in terms of management, I format them when they get near full and I repeat that process. Otherwise, I don't bother deleting, it just takes too long. There's lots and lots of files on all the uh, memory cards. So it's just quicker just for me to format and wipe everything and start again. 
Great little purchase at $12. And again, I'll put the links down below so you can try and find these things yourself. Next, when you finish filming for the day, no matter in studio or out on the, um, you know, out and about, clean your lenses. Always make sure your lenses are clean. So I carry um, a pack of these. I think this feels like it's the last one now. And I also have a backup with some homemade lens cleaner. This is a great little recipe I found online. It's 50% isopropyl with 50% uh, boiled water or distilled water preferably and a little dash of detergent. Works for glasses, works for glass, which is, you know, obviously what this is or what, you know, your camera is. And uh, yeah, this is the Rode Wireless System. This is the receiver, this is the transmitter. It's got its own built-in microphone here and you get packed in with them some funny little wind uh, muffs to actually try and break up the uh, you know any wind distortion you might get um good investment well worth it if you're starting out and you need to be doing uh, field work go do yourself a favor 280 bucks buy them next up these are the old cheap uh, double lapel microphone system i purchased off amazon i think last year about 50 or 60 bucks for these um they're not bad they're seriously not bad and this is a TRRS, that's a um, standard, uh, like, uh, what do you call it, mobile phone plug-in 3.5 millimeter jack. All right, little note. See this, this is a TRS, all right. So this is designed for camera equipment design to be actually plugged into cameras. If I was to plug this, into my mobile phone, it will not work because of the number of rings. So a TRRS has more rings and can plug into mobile phones. Very important point. You need to um, go out and buy yourself one of these cables, about $20 from Rode. You can get other cheap ones off eBay or whatever, but I would not recommend that because it's doing such a vital task. Okay, all right, now I diverge. So this double lapel microphone system is like a Y piece and it tethers. And as you've seen in previous videos, not a good look and it's fine for in-studio work, but I'll never ever use it again out in the field. That's basically it. There's a little uh, microphone, uh, wind cuff, wind <laughs> foam, wind foam uh, for the lapel system. And you know, this will only do so much out there. The wind's more than five k's per hour. You're gonna be hearing, you know, <sighs> that sort of noise, which is never very pleasant. All right, so that's that part of the bag. Next up, I've got my GoPro bag. And here, normally, I have it already mounted, but I've just been filming the, uh, the Nissan Leaf 2 review. Um, so that normally goes over there. And just the uh, very cheap accessory pack I got for about $35. And um, it's pretty good. This uh, suction mount has worked perfectly. I've mounted it on windows and driven along with it. Hasn't fallen off. I tethered it to the car just in case it was to fall off. This is a GoPro 7, a very recent purchase and a good one nonetheless. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to do more interesting footage given its ultra wide image. Um, I think these are now only going for about $300 and I think I paid about that. Um, you can definitely go for the GoPro Black, it gives you more features, but again, this is just a B-roll camera for me. Um, I like that it's waterproof as is, I don't need any extra housing, uh, they're tough and durable. Uh, you can do wireless transmission to your mobile phone so you can check your framing. You can do time-lapse things, so that's what the Nissan Leaf videos um, I use that for. And uh, you can take photographs with it, but I would not take photographs with them. And these things are remarkably small. It's amazing, just amazing what they can do. So this cheap little uh, bundle here is, I think, great value. Uh, you can buy the real GoPro accessories, but honestly, I think they'll make them in the same uh, factory. Like, if, for those who know GoPro accessories, this is a thing. This is what they all connect with. And they sort of uh, interlace with each other. I'll just quickly show you that. Um, and then you put a pin through. And so that's a true GoPro um, holder. And that's a Chinese knockoff, I guess. And they're fine. The, um, the pins that hold these things together, that I have had no dramas with these whatsoever. So don't, I think, feel compelled to buy brand stuff always. Do it as a use case. If it's mission critical, go for good quality. If 
you're going for camera equipment and you think it might break, just go for something that's reasonably uh, affordable. You don't have to go for the highest price thing because I guarantee you, if you think it will break, it will break. Next up is in the zip-up compartment. In here, chest harness, uh, head harness. Uh, you look like a complete dork when you wear that, so I highly recommend you do not wear it. Uh, hard disk cable, um, you know, with a special, um, I forget what they call that connection, but you know, like Samsung phones, I first saw those on, and then I realized it's actually like a hard disk type of thing. I've got a backup USB-C cable. I have got, a flathead screwdriver. What for? I'll tell you momentarily. And a few more GoPro accessories just to connect the, um, you know, interchange bits. And a pen, because you never know we need to make notes. Alrighty, so that's basically that part of it. But we are not done. Oh no! Next up, I have got a cage. What's a cage? Well, a cage is something that you can buy to actually house a camera. And the idea of it is to protect the camera but also give the ability to mount accessories around your camera. So this is what I use when I go out and about and do handheld shooting. So obviously here, I've got my um, uh, Rode video mic, which is just a cheap, like $120 version. And it's got a beautiful dead cat on it. And this helps break up the noise. It comes with a, a foam version um, that's in standard included with it, but it's not good enough in windy situations. So invest in a Rode uh, dead cat and it'll fit on there very nicely and this does an awesome job of actually um, stopping the wind from getting to your recordings. Connects through to the camera using a TRS connection so remember if you're going to record audio from this to your mobile phone get that converter cable yeah otherwise if your camera accepts um, an audio in this will connect to it beautifully and it'll be powered by it. So cages I also um, mount to it when I'm recording my uh, transmitter and um, receiver unit uh, for recording audio and then over this side it's not actually connected at the moment because I'm actually recording with my mobile phone right now Ooh, mind blown uh, I have over here a mobile phone holder and so I put the phone there so I can actually see the audio being recorded the camera sits here and audio um, you know, input devices up there. And this uh, gives you good stability in which to record with. So a cage, this is I think about $95. And uh, yeah, I, I like shooting with this. It feels very comfortable. It is about one kilogram plus, so it's gonna add to the bulk, but it's something that you don't necessarily need to be using all the time because heck, to look professional, best thing you can do, get a fluid head on a tripod. And that's the other thing obviously I take when I go out in the field is the tripod. But when the situation calls for it, the best thing you can do is get yourself some sort of gimbal. Okay, bit of history here on me. I used to have a Steadicam uh, Junior. That got stolen in America in 2014. And then I got myself a Glycam. Uh, they're the sort of thing that um, you'll see a lot of YouTubers running around with. And they're basically Steadicams and Glycams they balance the camera perfectly to like a central spot. So let's say that this is a, a glide camera or steady cam. It puts the center of gravity right at the uh, fulcrum. So when you're holding it, the entire camera is balanced right down to one little pivot point. And the idea is, is that your arm and the weights of the actual whole system will give you that stability. And with a bit of practice, you can actually get some good looking smooth footage, like you're on a dolly. But when you don't have that luxury, and or maybe you don't have that skill, these days, these things are so cheap. This is a um, one of those Chinese uh, knockoffs. I think it's, um, what do you call them? A, a Zun Yun. Mm, I know I'm savaging, I'm butchering that name. But this thing is awesome. And uh, let me just mount the camera onto it and you can see what it does. And know that whenever you see me do some slow motion footage of technology of, well, like the Nissan Leaf 2, the Kona EV review, I put this camera into high speed mode, so 120 frames per second, and then I do passing shots using um, the stabilizer. All right, so let me get that ready. Okay, it's ready to go. Now, before you ever turn these things on, 
you actually need to make sure it's somewhat balanced otherwise you're going to make the motors go crazy now uh, a little side note this stabilizer was actually designed for mobile phones but with an adapter kit which is what you can see here um, you can actually use it for small compact cameras and this whole combination just comes in at that weight factor so to make sure that this is balanced see you probably can't see that at the moment but it's tilting down with a bit this way it's good with its front and back but it's tilting down so what i need to do is i just need to bring this out a bit just a cinch doesn't take a lot now we're a bit too far to that did you see that was like a millimeter that's pretty good I can do better there we go all right lock that down that there's a weight here and we're ready so now when I turn this on there it goes so now this thing no matter what I do is going to keep that camera perfectly stabilized there are different modes and so it's like a, a follow mode so as I tilt it tilts and it follows wherever I go my dog is driving me mad today <laughs> um, uh, has um, also like a, a dolly um, what do you call it? a crane mode so it keeps it perfectly um, pointed horizontal like level with the ground so watch what happens I'm gonna just point tilt that down see how it's staying pointed uh, that way instead of following it downwards awesome device and this is only uh, not even I think it was hundred and twenty dollars DJI make one as well for about oh, one fifty dollars to two hundred dollars well worth the investment great to have in your kit and um, yeah do yourself a favor definitely buy one of these and last but not least in my go bag along with my large tripod is this little Manfrotto tripod and this baby I never knew I needed one until I got one and since I've had it I use it all the time I use it on this to help actually you know set this thing up and to be able to put this down and just walk away from it set things up come back to it pick it up and I'm ready to go again but also I will use it with this camera and the one of the heads one of the uh, Manfrotto quick release heads and man definitely and these Manfrotto little uh, devices they're expensive I forget what I paid I got it from Ted's and um, yeah I, I can't I can't tell you enough that if you haven't got one of these now I would suggest first up go do yourself a favor and buy one of these you can put them anywhere and uh, they've got these like I'm just gonna turn this off because it's gonna get upset with me in a second all right so now it's off and it's gonna go just all floppy doopily um, it's got little rubber feet on it and it means that yeah it grips on things and it's like a red button here so you can um, manipulate the amount of angle on something perfect device well I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have give it a big thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this consider subscribing I'll put two to three videos out per week but actually if this is on YouTube and you're seeing it there that means that you're actually watching an exclusive patreon behind the scenes video as I build up patreon this sort of content is only going to be available plus there's a lot of other perks and polls and other things that you just can't see here all right so if you want to see this sort of thing ongoing join me over on patreon your support is really appreciated and it helps the channel and helps to buy more equipment like what you just seen and hey you know what the deal is be good be green